Yes, yes, give her, enough, give her a hand, give her a hand. I appreciate uh, the musical talent that's around here. And uh, I was, Nellie, I was singing Trust in the Bay back there. Just, as, uh, I loved it, loved it. And uh, without this stuff, you know what I mean? It prepares us, doesn't it? Doesn't it really? It, it just kind of gets us where we need to be spiritually and mentally. Um, and so I appreciate it. Welcome to the service. Glad that you're here. Um, glad that uh, <clears throat> that you <clears throat> embraced that freezing cold and you were willing to come in. And uh, glad we could be back in church. Boy, it just, you know, when you, when you cancel a service, it just, the whole week feels off a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back with you this morning. Um, <clears throat> to those of you who are online joining us, um, you're, we celebrate o- open communion. Um, if you're a believer in Christ, we, we want you to know that we will be having communion and you're welcome to join us um, if you're shut in. Um, also, wanted to make an announcement uh, that tonight, uh, Pastor Jesse is going to be using the church for a service. He wants to do a, a Martin Luther King uh, service, and he's got some people coming in. So I'm going to um, I'm going to cancel Light for the Journey, um, mostly because I know that you can't really stream when you've got noise back in the background going off. It's really distracting. So. Um, no light for the journey tonight, and you're welcome to come. He didn't give me the time, so I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it's around the 6.30 time frame, if you want to be a part of that. Um, so that's going on this evening, and so there'll be no light for the journey for those of you who get on and follow along. Um, so that's a pretty good program and ministry. Okay, having said that, today is, is the third Sunday of the month when we celebrate communion. So uh, anybody need one of these before we get started? All right. I'd like to open with a word of prayer. I'd like to pray for you as a team, as a praise team makes their way, um, and uh, ask God just to help us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father in heaven, I just come to you and I thank you for who you are. I thank you um, that uh, there is no God like you. Um, that we serve the living God. I thank you, Lord. Um, I really, really thank you. We cannot express uh, our gratitude, none of us. The fact that you put your Holy Spirit within us, who teaches us and helps us and, and does for us what we feel so inadequately enabled to do. And even in our worship, Lord, we, we feel so uh, unworthy, certainly unqualified to worship the King of Kings. And yet this morning we'll be at your table. And you call us to come to it boldly in your word, um, that we come before you boldly. And uh, we come, but we're, we're keenly aware of the grace, the marvelous, wonderful, unfathomable grace and mercy that is extended to us. It is our heart's desire to be a people who is a holy people and uh, keep changing us but but we never lose sight of the fact jesus that you are the author of our salvation and you are the finisher of our salvation and we're here to worship you for it and all the people of god said amen 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 let's stand and worship the lord now turn off my mic and we'll all be grateful the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to One day every knee will bow, 
Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to
Aren't you glad for their ministry? Oh, how sweet it is to praise the King of Kings. Amen, amen, yeah, yeah. We celebrate uh, one another and we, as we celebrate the Lord together and as they have ministered to us, and we are so grateful. Uh, so appreciate my musicians and singers. At this time, we're going to... Uh, we're going to celebrate at the Lord's table together. Is there anybody who needs one of these that maybe forgot to get one? Okay. We're all good? Good. good. Terry, Miss Nellie, you've got one. Yeah, I see it. She's all ready to go. Got to love this lady. If you're like me, I, I, every time I come to the Lord's table... I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed with love and grace and mercy. I'm not just reminded of what Jesus Christ did for me on that day. I, I, I'm reminded of how much Jesus loves me.
I am also reminded of how much I am human and frail. You are too. I know you are. And Satan likes to remind us how much we come up short. We call it sin, folks. And yet, it was Jesus who said, I desire to have this with you. Let's pray. Lord, you just heard us proclaim with transparency before you that we don't think of ourselves higher than we ought. And we also shared with you that we understand mercy and grace, love, compassion that has been bestowed upon us. And you didn't just save us, Lord. You, you made us family. sons, daughters of the living God. You've given us an inheritance. You made us your bride. And you prepare a place for us. And we want to take this moment now, Lord, and we, we just take this time and we confess to you our humanity and our sinfulness and we seek forgiveness. And we, we, we come to you and we, we just ask that you would bless the, the cup and the loaf and that you'll stir in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits a, a, a renewed love for our holiness is bound up in you, Jesus. You are the author and the finisher of our salvation and of our walk and our growth. And we want to celebrate at your table and be reminded of the great cost as we take this together with all the saints at your table. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen and amen. <coughs> I forget, Tim, I have the ability to do this for you, so I just did. <laughs> I'm back there singing with this in my hand. I, I was afraid that when I opened it, it would be crumbs. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take this and eat, remembering that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your soul and your body unto everlasting life. Drink this, remembering that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Lord Jesus, we are thankful to be here at your table like this. It's been our privilege to be reminded fresh and new once again of the great price that you paid and the great love that you showed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Ken. You can pass it to one end or the other. Ken will be happy to gather these for you.
Amen. 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 Thank you, Nelly. Come on, gentlemen. Father, as these men make their way forward, we do this as, uh, every week. It's worship for us. Bless the gift. Bless the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. on the sparrow and he watches me. Thank you, Nellie. Well, today is going to be, uh, the way I see it, is a teaching moment, but it's also at the same time a follow-up with uh, the last message that I have in the, regarding the school board, uh, Rochester Public School Board title of this message is Giving It to God. The key verse will be coming out of Romans, and I want to read to you a portion that Paul writes to the Church of Rome, um, particularly to the, uh, well, the Church of Rome is the Christians, um, and he gives us a list. Paul doesn't do this very often, but he gives us a list of um, what it is to be a Christian, and um, I think he got it. I certainly get it. But it is a teaching moment because I'm not sure that we always get it. And if I'm transparent with you, um, I, you know, if I get caught up and I slip up, this is one of the areas. And I think it's a, it can be a um, heat of the moment thing, and we find ourselves we find ourselves um, uh, doing and saying things perhaps that are not becoming of Christ. The scripture teaches us, well actually Romans, Paul writes here, he said, do, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, and so, you know, that's what we want to we practice. Scripture also says be uh, quick to listen and slow to speak, you know. We tend to do it the other way around. We would rather engage and then listen later. And so I had to practice this this week. And I think it's a teaching moment because I, I suspect that all of us, all of us struggle with this issue to not be overcome by evil. We recognize it. And when you passionately love Jesus and you see evil being called good or good evil. And I'm not equating that situation here to this particular scenario, but it, 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 stir, it stirs up a passion in us. And we tend to want to defend Christ sometimes even. And, and, and you, you got to understand, this, this short little fella who has a lot of Irish in his blood, I tend to be passionate. <laughs> I've got an extra dose, and so, and so, um, you know, I, I battle it. And so, I want to take some time to speak to the church about being led by the Spirit of God that brings about a godly response in the midst of a toxic and pugnacious culture. That's a fancy word, right? Yeah, it means argumentative. Okay, if you want. Uh, 
ready for a fight. And that is our culture, one side or the other. It's, it's so easy to lose our way and allow ourselves to get caught up in the heat of the moment, especially when we believe the circumstance is not a righteous one. And I get a witness. Yeah. I mean, we're all about righteousness, right? Because our God is all about righteousness. And it's like, and so, and, and I know that I do. I get caught up in it. And I try to find ways to remember. I want to say to you, always remember that God is always going to bring about righteousness. There's, it, there's called a, it's called a judgment day. And everything is going to be made righteous. And God, it is God who said, you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so, you know, giving it to God, sometimes it's just a hard process for us. Um, in fact, God is always going to bring about righteousness, so much so that it, it was um, to satisfy righteousness. It was, this, this, this act was to satisfy righteousness that compelled God the Father to watch His only Son be crucified on the cross. God could not, not deal with unrighteous sin. He had to. And the requirement to fix it and to make it right required God the Father to watch God the Son die as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Why would God do that? that, would, that you know, why would God do that? Because God is a God of righteousness. And righteousness must be satisfied. And God will see to it. That's how important it is to God. I can't imagine what God the Father must have felt. You know, he has feelings. When his son cried out. Why have you forsaken me? The only thing that could make the rebelliousness of sin of all humanity right was for Jesus Christ to become the Lamb of God. Without his atoning sacrifice, sin could not be made right. And God is righteous, and he will always bring about righteousness. And when we are faced with it in our culture, we need to be able to remember, and that's why I'm taking time with this, that God will bring about righteousness. He just doesn't always do it on my time. good for you and I to love righteousness and hate evil. It is good for you and I to be passionate and have a zeal for the Lord and be passionate about righteousness. It is bad when we are so consumed with passion that we lose ourselves and begin to behave just as the world behaves. Can I get an amen? Are you with me? Are you hearing me? Carl, do you hear yourself? Okay. Let me bring you up to speed on what's been going on in my life regarding uh, the contention that I have with the Rochester Public School Handbook. Um, and what you need to understand that I, is that I'm, uh, what I'm rebelling to uh, is that I am being coerced or forced to believe uh, the school system's beliefs that are found in their equity state. Um, I think it's important for you to know, and I'll, I'll show you some portions of that from the handbook, um, that how it's embedded in, in, in the, the handbook, it's not, 
It's not crystal clear and just right out there in bold writing. Now, on page three, first couple pages are pages are contents, the table of contents. Page three, the first statement then is their ten belief statements. I call them ten commandments, but then I'm being prejudiced and antagonistic, okay? I call it their ten commandments, not God's ten commandments, but but their ten belief statements. So, um, and I see it as idolatry. Um, but so that's on page three. It really isn't until you get to page six, so there's a lot of stuff in between page three, the equity statement, belief statements, to page six. Okay? You understand? So what I'm trying to say is, is that it's almost like the fine print that nobody wants to bother reading that this stuff comes out. And I'll show you what it says and why I, I've taken the stance that I do. And then I want to share with you some of where we are so far on the outcome of this. Um, and, I, and I'm doing this be, not, be, not because I'm trying to tattletale, or in fact, I, I had it initially in my PowerPoint, the email pr pr laid out for you, but in the, in the handbook, I'm also told that I'm not supposed to share email. So I, I can share content. I'll share it with you, the summation of what was said. I'll paraphrase it, okay? And that way, I'm abiding by their, their handbook. Um, so the, the equity statements on page three, the table, uh, the table contents, first two pages, and then page six, you, you read their mission and vision and core value statement. Go ahead and put that. I, I'll do it. I got it. I'm not, can you read that? It's not real, real, real critical that you read all the fine print. What I really want to point out to you is that the, the heading is mission and core values because I want to share with you what they make us agree to. And then as you come down, you'll see that third paragraph, universal goals, uh, this is part of their core values. And I just highlighted access and equity. Well, what is equity? Equity is on page three, their equity statement, all their ten beliefs. Okay, and uh, that's really what I want to share with you is that they include equity into it, all right? But here's where the, here's where the rub comes from comes to. Uh, below that, employees' responsibility and, and employee conduct of expectations. As an employee of RPS, you are expected to, and the real problem I have is with this word, adhere, which means comply with, uh, become obedient to, adhere uh, to the mission. Remember I showed you the mission and core values? The mission and core values previously noted. And in that mission and core values is the equity statement. And in the equity statement are the belief statements that they expect you to adhere to. Okay? This is real fine print. This is not stuff that you just kind of like, oh, it just jumps out at you. Now what I really want to share with you is that I read through this is that the Holy Spirit in me was like instantly I had red flags flying up. And I'm looking at this thinking why? This is two years ago. But why? And so then I started to begin to read and started understanding what they're really asking of me. What are they asking of me? They're asking me to adhere to their beliefs. Are you with me? Okay. So my meeting a week or so ago was, you know, about that. I, and, and there's another place then when you close this document, up pops another screen that says I, I, um, I agree to comply with the handbook. These are in the handbook. This is what I have uh, issues with, and this is what I wanted to show you. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, and uh, I just kind of wanted you to understand what it is I'm dealing with. Now, I got a, I got a response from HR um, and the head of HR, and he said that after a lot of discussion, uh, given the current wording, um, that uh, in the in, in the handbook, um, they made a they, uh, not to require me to to sign off to tick that little box. Okay, the reason I couldn't tick the little box is because of what I shared with you right here. What's actually in the 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 um, handbook? Okay, that's the, the what I shared with you today is the, is the underlying issue that. I, I would be bowing my knee to Baal, in other words, to another set of Ten Commandments 
that are not God's commandments and uh, that actually go, one of them particularly goes against even our church doctrinal statements. And so he sent me and said, uh, they're not going to make me sign off on it. And uh, as long as I, and, and here's where I got into it. So as long as I completely comply with the handbook. Okay. So all of a sudden, it's almost like, you know, when trouble's around in the back of your hair, it's, it's the Holy Spirit, you know, red flags, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm wrestling with this. And I'm like, but this is vague. And so I, 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 I shared it. I sent it on to my union rep, you know, because he's been with me on this. And, and uh, I brought it home, and I sent it to my wife so that she could see it. And, uh, and she said, well, honey, he's trying to give you what you, what you want, what's your beef. And I said, well, but it's vague. And I still don't know that he isn't asking me to, to comply with the beliefs, which is the real issue here. I can't honor God and comply with with the beliefs. But she said, I'm not sure he means it that way. Why don't you ask him what he means by it? And I was like, man, then. And so he actually sent this last Friday, um, the Friday before this past Friday. Um, and he sent it to me. I didn't get it till Tuesday. We had Martin Luther King Day off. And uh, he said, I got it on Tuesday morning. I come in, I check my email, and there it is. And I first started reading it, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is great. God is working. God is working great. And then he had completely comply with the handbook. And I'm like, oh, nothing's changed. What, what I felt, and I told Debbie, and, but this is my, 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 my struggle, right? And I said, I just feel like he's reframed the issue. And he, so that we're not really talking about the issue. And so she's like, what are you going to do, you know? And I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then my union guy says, so, so Mr. Tenney, you, he's given you what you asked for. Uh, you don't have to tick the box. And, you know, and you still have issues. And I'm like, yeah. So my union guy, and, and bless Debbie's heart, she's always, always the peacemaker. You guys, when you pray for her, it works. Because she's always defending you guys. If I have an issue, she's, she's on your side. I was like, what? You're supposed to be married to me. You're supposed to be with me. But, but she doesn't do that. She always kind of takes the other side, and she tries to help me see, you know, another perspective. And you got to love her for it. She's a good wife, and uh, she's a true friend. And, and so is Curtis, my, my union rep. A lot of times I'll run something by him, and I'll say, hey, am I just being overly sensitive? And uh, sometimes you'll say, well, Carl, just, blow, just vent and get over it and move on, you know. And so he lets me vent, and, and, and I let him vent. We do that for each other. Because he gets all worked up too. His job is to take care of workers and make sure things are done in a righteous way. And when it's not, he gets worked up. And so a lot of times he'll call me and vent to me. And, and I'll say to him, Curtis, I know you're just venting. I know you're not going to do anything with this. But I sure, get, I sure hear what you're saying. And, and he does that for me. And Debbie sure does that for me. And so, you know, I spent. And so he asked me about Wednesday, what, what are you going to do about it? And I, and I told him, I, I'm not sure. I'm still praying. And um, I, I, you know, I, I just kept thinking what Debbie, what Debbie has shared. Well, we'll ask him. I want to read to you my response, okay? Um, and, and, his res and, and his communication was very kind. I need you to understand that. And what I really want you to understand as a church is something that God has been teaching me ever since I started working and ever since two years ago when this came out. What God has said to me is, Carl... Be quiet and listen and watch. For two years, I've, I've done that pretty much. I didn't show up with, the, with all of and I, the, those who were the outcry that went at the school board. I didn't show up to that. I did go and talk to, the, the, at that time, he was, he was still interim, the new superintendent, and I spent an hour with him talking about some of these issues. Um, other than that, I wrote a letter two years ago that gave me a religious exemption, and it wasn't until this year that this, this resurfaced for me. And so I've, I've pretty much just been praying about, okay, God, what are you trying to show me? And you guys have heard messages from me, and I've shared with you that our, that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but 
principalities. The HR director, Carl, Mr. Bakken, is not my enemy. He's part of the mission. Dr. Pickell is not my enemy. He's not yours either. He's part of the mission. The school board aren't our enemies. They're not our fight. They're our mission. Can I get an amen? People are why God watched his son die. And the message of the church is to go out into that culture that is hostile to the church today and win them. To be Jesus to them. Good morning, Mr. Bakken. Here's my reply. I knew he'd get it in the morning. I replied on Friday about 6.30 in the morning. When I got to work, I didn't know how I'd reply exactly. But I was like, Lord, you've got to help me. First, thank you for your work on this issue. I have a question for clarification's sake, as I think you are intending to say it, but I want to be certain, for it makes a difference. You hear Debbie whispering in my ear? God uses her. By this email, you are saying that I am not compelled to believe or adhere to the belief statements in your equity document including, uh, included in your core values in the handbook, specifically the beliefs that go against my religion, provided that my conduct and behavior is not discriminatory to others that believe or think differently than me and that I comply with everything else in the handbook. If that is what you mean, then I must say thank you very much for making a way for me to obey my Lord Jesus and Savior, keep my ordination vows, and serve Rochester Public Schools with honor. If that's not what you mean by this email, please clarify. I thank you with a sincere and grateful heart. And then it's signed, Lead Custodian Carl Tenney. Uh, I'm always tempted to give my, my religious credentials, and I have at times, but it does, it's not necessary. You know what I know? That throughout this whole scenario, God the Holy Spirit is speaking, whispering words of righteousness. He just happens to be using me to stir things up to know and to make people aware. I need to trust Jesus. I need to trust God. I don't need to make a, a, a huge fight about it. Now, I can tell you this. And some of you asked me a couple weeks ago if I planned to sue. Um, I've had some discussions with a few folks who are very conservative. Uh, they're Christians. There was some discussion towards me trying to sway me to push back harder. I definitely have a civil rights case going on here. But here's the issue. God knows all about it, doesn't he? And if I truly believe that God is in charge, then I should be able to trust him to deal with this as he best sees fit. Or at least... I sure should get out of the way and give God opportunity to work here. To work in me and to work in those individuals involved with all of this. 
make no mistake, it is a huge issue, and, and it's a huge issue regarding my civil rights, and more importantly, it's a huge righteousness issue. Yes, I have been asked if I intend to take legal action. The answer to that question is resoundly, yes, my resolve is to go all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. But if I can, and as peaceably and lovingly try to find a way to settle this long before it gets there, after all, isn't that the way of Christ? Isn't he lovingly, tenderly, waiting patiently? Isn't it his kindness that leads us towards repentance? Oh, wait a minute. There's a scripture that actually says that. I believe this is a time for me to learn, uh, or for me to lean in on God and less on me. To trust and obey. Loved it, Miss Nelly. Couldn't believe you were playing it right out of the gate. To trust and to obey. If after that, the school still doubles down on their position, I will seek legal counsel. But I want to read to you something that Apostle Paul wrote to the church. And I believe it's good counsel for us. And I also want to remind you to be careful not to get carried away by the moment, but rather give God opportunity to work. Sometimes the church just goes charging and doesn't allow the Holy Spirit the time and His will and His desire to have patience with those that we are trying to win. Hear me, my resolve is to go all the way. But my prayer is to not have to. My son teaches martial arts. I never knew this. He, he educated me on a few things. He's got like Six or seven, I mean, black, I mean, it's, all the police forces are, are, are using him to, to teach their, their men how to, I mean, because his isn't a sport. It's true defense. When they do their bow, they take their fist, and they do this. Do you know what this is really all about? This is knowing that you have the power and ability to do something about it, that you can control it. But this is the discipline to not use it unless you have to. That's a paraphrase, but that's what it means. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities of the air and the prince of this wicked world. And our God is big enough to deal with these things. Can I get an amen? amen? And I am asking the church to be praying that we don't have to go to the Supreme Court, but that righteousness would avail here in our culture and that we, Oak Hills, will have made an impression an indelible impression that leads others to the Lord Jesus Christ through love. There's no greater thing. And Paul writes to the church in the Corinthian letter, to the 13th chapter, read it at every wedding. The greatest of these is love. Mr. Bakken, he's trying. He's got a problem too because he has a board who wants everybody to to be compelled to believe something that we shouldn't have to be compelled to believe. I'm trying to say, not only for my sake, but there's a bunch of others who went down to, there was another person who went down to HR and asked for a religious exemption too. I have a case, and I know it, a strong case, legally. They do not. For those who follow behind me, and for their sake, that they can follow their conscience, and that they can, 
they don't, may not have vows of ordination, but they have a God that they want to follow His commandments. You understand? I want to read this to you, and I'll close. Well, where did my sermon go? <laughs> this is fun. I didn't paste it in here. I guess I'm going to read it. Yeah, I'll just read it from there. Uh, I thought I thought three pages was a bit short, Tim. Uh, the marks of a true Christian. Let love be genuine. How about that? Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. That's the right thing to do. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another. And by the way, this first portion is really written to the church and how we interact with one another in the church. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. You know what? God likes little Irish men who can get all worked up. And love God. And you guys don't see it, but half the time I'm back there dancing when we're singing. Don't be slothful in zeal. But fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient. Oh, be patient in tribulation. Constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hosp hospitality. Bless those. Now he's talking about outsiders. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with, low, with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Oh, I'm so glad God sent a Curtis and Debbie into my life. Yeah. Repay no evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live, at, live peaceably with the church. Everybody agrees with me? No. With all. Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to wrath of leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good there are times for all things and all seasons for things and my resolve is sure and my prayer is that I don't have to go there should be your prayer that I don't have to go there I haven't really threatened that yet I'm trying to do everything in a godly fashion. Keep on praying. This obviously isn't resolved. Or perhaps it is. And perhaps he'll say nothing and agree with my statement, which means I don't comply to their Ten, ten Commandments, which, by the way, is idolatry. Okay? Thou shalt make no other gods. I covet your prayers. I wrestled with this. This little Irishman got worked up. I see a lot of people in the church getting all worked up. And I think it's pretty hard sometimes to trust God with it when we're honest. And I would challenge you to trust God. Tim, I think I have a... I got the button. Let me... Let me close with this. Giving it to God is not always as easy as it sounds. 
but God knows you can do it. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And wouldn't you love to put this message all over Facebook? <laughs> Father, as a church in our community, we're, we're praying for our school system. We're praying for our current school board. We're asking, Lord, that you would bless them in such a way that they are blessed and convicted and given insight on how to fix the social justice issues that they're trying to fix without you. And know that you, with you, we can address these issues. For those of us in the maintenance department who are trying to stand up for you, Lord, go before us. We pray, Lord, a prayer that if it pleases you and we do not have to, help us to figure this out and get it right long before we get into the legalities of it. We pray for Dr. Patel. We pray for, for Mr. Bachman. We pray for Curtis, who uh, well, he's not a part of this congregation, Lord. We, we know that he cares and he's trying to help people. We pray for the school system. We pray, Father, that you would bless them with financial resources without having to tax us to death. We pray for the students. Lord, I do love my babies. Sure, the fifth graders would resent that, but I'm grateful for them. I pray for the teachers. Lord, I see them trying to accomplish something, and their hands are so often tied. And there are a lot of problems in our school system. There's no argument to that. Lord, as a church, we're looking to righteousness, and our argument with our culture right now is that they can trust you if they only would. And help them to understand, Lord, that they cannot coerce us or force us to believe what they seem to want to believe. Help them with this. Please. Help me. I know, Lord, I confess that when I was in Friedel, I was so angry with you for putting me there. Now, looking back, I, I see what you've been trying to teach me. Help me as a leader to teach my church. Help me as a believer to be rooted in your word. Give me discernment. Help me as a passionate Irishman quick to listen. Slow my speech down. Thank you, Lord, for whom you've given me in my life. Thank you for a church that supports me. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in Rochester, Minnesota. You know, Lord, that I asked to go south. 
here I am in this chilly weather, happy, glad to serve you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the forgiveness. mercy and patience help me to practice it in Jesus name amen may God and oh may you sense it bountifully cause his face to shine on you may all that he is be before you in your kingly aware. When you rise up in the morning and you put your head on the pillow, you will say it has truly been good to walk with the Lord this day. And may God bring us back together next week to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. Wonderful.